Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your work of intercession for each one of us. Without you, we are lost. We thank you. And as we enter your presence, we come with praise, we come with thanksgiving. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to save us. Worthy, worthy is our great high priest, Jesus Christ, who ever lives to make intercession for us. And you have promised that if we come boldly to the throne of grace, that we will obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. May we see our need and come to you to supply our need before it's too late. Now, please, revive us, reform us throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Thursday, March 18th, 2021. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Welcome one, welcome all to this Midday Power Surge. Thank you all for joining us live. All right, friends, let's get right into it. We're living in a time of crisis. And very, very soon, what has transpired in Bible times will be repeated. And I'm going to refer you quickly to the account of Samson and the account of Jesus Christ. But before I do so, let me segue and address these current events. Take a look at this, my friends. Look at this headline from the Washington Post. The headline reads, Anti-inoculation extremism is akin to domestic terrorism. Think about that, my friends. In other words, they're telling us, you are a domestic terrorist. That's what they're saying. You are not a Christian. You are not an American patriot. If you do not receive Caesars, the government, Pestilence 1-9, inoculation, that's exactly what they're saying. Let's take a look at this, friends. It says, this campaign to deny potentially life-saving vaccines to those seeking them and to poison public opinion against the inoculations could result in countless American deaths. This is akin to domestic terrorism. That's it. It goes on to say, the country's founding motto, out of many, one, defines our sacred civic duty to love others as much as ourselves. Pause right there. Love others as much as you love yourselves? Is that not a motto, a statement from Scripture. So what they're actually saying in no uncertain terms, if we refuse to accept the pestilence one nine panacea, that means we do not love our neighbors. I'm talking now to our individuals, our people within our circles. You are not a Christian, they're saying. Notice blue words. Notice who they quoted. As Pope Francis has said of the Pestilence one non inoculations. It is the moral choice because it is about your life, but also the lives of others. Notice now, getting inoculated is a patriotic act. If you don't go along, there it is, friends, with this agenda and receive this panacea, you are not a patriot. That's the point I want to drive home. And friends, please write this down. Do you know that Jesus and Paul were labeled terrorists? Yes, friends. Luke 23, 
Verse number 2. Put that down. Acts 24 and verse number 5. Let me, be, let me be very clear. Jesus was condemned, persecuted, and put to death. And the words that were thrown upon Christ, the black balls, was that Jesus was not Caesar's friend. He refused to go along with Caesar's agenda. That's John chapter 19. Verse number 12. Note it. And verse number 15. But remember, who said in Luke chapter 20, Render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and render unto God the things which belong to God. That's Luke 20 and verse 25. Now first note this, does our body belong to Caesar or does our bodies, do our bodies belong to God? Yes. So we should not give Caesar control of what to put in our bodies. That 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and verse number 20. So now, those who don't go along with Caesar's potion, no. I need an adjective. Caesar's deadly potion. They are going to be called people who are not friend of Caesar. That's it. They are unpatriotic. Not a U.S. patriot. Where are you from? Jamaica? You're not a Jamaican patriot. That's what they're going to say, my friends. You're not a Christian. You don't love your neighbors. At the very genesis of this presentation... I want my golden theme to be as clear as crystal. Look at what this says. Great Controversy, page 592. The time is going to come that we, Bible-believing Christians, we, God's commandment-keeping people, we, God's Sabbath-keeping people, are going to be denounced as enemies of law and order. You're unpatriotic. You're terrorists domestic terrorists as breaking down the moral restraints of society causing anarchy and corruption blue words they will be accused of disaffection toward the government that's it friends that's it clear as crystal notice now and in desire of ages page 541 i want everyone to note this golden point those who killed Jesus, those who persecuted the apostles of Jesus, do you know what they call themselves? They call themselves Jewish patriots. Yes. And as they said, Caesar is our friend to Pilate. We have no king but Caesar. The Jewish leaders who persecuted Christ and the apostles were also calling themselves Roman patriots. What an application today. It's right there. Blue words on top. Satan told them that in order to maintain their authority, they must put Christ to death. Red words. They regarded themselves as patriots who were seeking the nation's salvation. Oh, we want to save people from being sick. We want to save people from dying. We are patriots and those who refuse to go along with Caesar's deadly, noxious potions, those people are domestic terrorists. Those people are not Christians. Look at this. Youth instructor also says, red words, those rulers, they call themselves patriots. It's there again, friends. Blue words, they thought that by putting Christ to death, they could avert danger and preserve their power. Black words underlined, every device possible was to be tried to find something whereby Christ could be represented as working against, working against, one more time, working against the Roman power. They said Jesus was not a Roman power patriot he was not a jewish patriot so what did they do red word they play spies on christ track what would they do with us today god's faithful remnant 
Spies come to our Facebook page. Spies come to our YouTube channel. Spies come to our website. Spies come to our Instagram page. Spies frequent our local meetings. Putting spies on his track who would profess, profess to be honest inquirers after truth. But what happened? They hoped to entrap him. Are these points clear? I'm laying the foundation. And we are told, my friends, that we are not called to be Roman patriots. We're not called to be Jewish patriots. We're simply called to be a true, that, that adjective, a true Christian patriot. And if we are not standing now, but we are defiling our bodies, we're not going to stand when the final test comes. And at that time, against the Sunday law crisis, they're going to say, if you don't go along with Sunday worship, when it becomes the law of the land, then you are not a U.S. patriot. You're not a Jamaican patriot. You get the point. You're not a European patriot. You're not an Australian patriot. You're not a Caribbean patriot. You're not an Asian patriot patriot you're not an african patriot you get the point you're not an canadian can't leave those out patriot you're not a south american central american patriot volume 5 page 135 the book adventist home page 230 same quote listen none of us need expect that when the last great trials come upon us that a self-sacrificing true patriotic spirit for christ will be developed in a moment because needed no friends no oh no indeed this spirit what spirit the true christian patriotic spirit must be blended with our daily experience read that friends and what else? And be infused into the minds and hearts of our children, both by precept and example. Mothers in Israel. Mothers in Seventh-day Adventism. Mothers of Christianity. Fathers in Israel. Fathers in Seventh-day Adventism. Fathers hmm, in Christianity. It's time. To receive the true patriotic spirit. How much more can I say, my friends? What more can be said? All right, friends. I'm going to share with you now a number of statements, current events, where we are seeing from church and state union, both church and state, church and state union are now proclaiming this. Those who receive Caesar's pestilence 1-9 inoculation. Those are the people that love their neighbors. Hmm. Those are the people who are Christian patriots. Watch this. Those are the people who are Muslim patriots. Those are the people who are Jewish. You get the point. Hindus, you get those are the patriots. But those who refuse do not love their neighbors. Look at this, friends. My golden theme, watch this. This is March 17th, 2021, fresh off the press. Faith leaders get the pestilence one nine shots to show trust in inoculations at White House event. Next, Mr. Fauci states he leads mass inoculation push with DC area. Don't forget this because there is a particular church in Washington, D.C., the D.C. area, I will come to them shortly. With D.C. area, faith leaders, church and state, listen to this now. Watch carefully. Example, that getting the vaccine is a way of loving our neighbors. Mm. Fifth, governmental partnerships with faith leaders to promote public health are permitted, not prohibited by our Constitution. Hmm. Is that point clear, friends? 
Did you hear that? If you don't, you're, you, you do not love your neighbor. And then it was stated that church and state partnership, which means union, church and state union, to solve the nation's crises is permitted by the U.S. Constitution. Wake up, my friends. Will, will the pestilences become more and more frequent and disastrous? Mm -hmm. Will calamities become more and more frequent and disastrous? So what will solve it? Church and state union, what is the primary goal? The primary solution, Sunday rest by law. If we cannot stand now as a true Christian patriot, we're not going to stand when the Sunday law is enforced. Now, those of you, when the Sunday law is enforced, now those of you who are calling in, could you kindly wait? Please. All right, friends. Notice, this is, you know who it is, Mr. Anthony. And what did he say? Similar words. Who are the true patriots? Who are the true Christians? Who love their neighbors? Listen. So I want to close by thanking all of the people who've been vaccinated, as well as those who plan to get vaccinated, because what you're doing is not only protecting yourselves, your families, and your communities, but you're being part of the important process of ending this terrible pandemic that has a... So you're being part of the important process. So those who don't adhere and go along, you are anti-Caesar's processes. Clip number two, listen. This terrible pandemic that has essentially immobilized our country and the world for the last year. We will get through this and we will get through it by vaccination. Thank you. Mm, 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 mm. And now comes, watch carefully, Melissa Rogers. She's actually going to say in this vaccine confidence is one of the example showing a partnership between church and state. So if your church, if your religion, but let's speak about Christianity and Seventh-day Adventism. If our churches refuse to go along with Caesar in this crisis, then our churches are not Christian. We don't love our neighbor. Beloved, I'm going to share with you Samson and Christ shortly. Watch this. I'd like to thank National Cathedral for organizing this terrific event tonight and for inviting us to participate. This is one great example of a partnership between government and faith-based organizations. And as president... Mm. All right, notice this. Watch carefully. If you don't partner, you don't love your neighbor. Listen. And as President Biden has recognized... Please, friends, listen. And as President Biden has recognized, faith-based organizations can play key roles in helping Americans get vaccinated. Let me mention just a few reasons government should work with interested religious leaders and faith-based organizations on vaccination efforts. Mm. All right, notice the next clip, listen. First, houses of worship are pervasive and familiar to many Americans. Countless Americans are far more comfortable getting their shot in a house of worship than in a pharmacy or a doctor's office. Mm. Do you see, do you remember, friend, this is a script. Look at the screen, it's a script. Do you remember this several years ago, it's a script. Then I said, watch this. And I threw up a map with dots all over the map, dot, 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 everywhere. I said, here are the 726 churches in this province. If you're sick, let's say you have AIDS, where would you like to get your ARVs? After it was over, Melinda Gates came up to me. She says, I get it, Rick. Houses of worship are the distribution center for all we need to do. That's it, friends. And that's what we need to partner on. Oh, yes. Thank you. you. Friends, you get the point. Notice now, I'm going to share with you just one clip from yesterday's Midday Power Surge. Dr. Richard Berry stated 
that pastors who do not receive the pestilence one nine inoculation and do not persuade their members to receive the same, do not love their members, and they're putting their churches, their church members, at risk. Listen, friends, here it is. Second. Listen. Okay, this is all to protect the pastors and the members of the Spanish community. Okay, esto, todo esto es para proteger a los pastores y los miembros de la iglesia hispana, la comunidad hispana. Many ministers are putting their, their congregation at risk. Mm. There it is, friends. That's clear. You're putting them at risk if you don't go along with this agenda. You don't love your neighbor as yourself, pastors. I'm telling you, look at the account of Samson. Hold on, friends. Do you remember how Delilah used subtlety to deceive Samson? And she tried a couple of times previously, and Samson did not yield. Then, then Delilah said to Samson, Oh, Samson, if you really loved me, Samson, you would tell me your secret. If you really loved me, Samson, you would, join, you would give in to my directions, my inquiries, my demands. If you really loved me, Samson, you would yield and give me my request. Who was behind Delilah? By the, who was conflated with D Delilah? It was the Philistines. So the Philistines, paganism, Philistines, paganism, also a civil power, Delilah, a woman, church and state. Again, Samson, oh, if you really loved me, you would yield. And what did Samson do? He yielded. What happened to Samson's eyes? Became blinded, my friends. What is wrong with lukewarm Laodiceans? Revelation 3, verse 14 to verse 21. They are blind, don't see their need. And now government and church union are telling us, if you really loved your neighbor, you would yield to Caesar's processes, Caesar's pestilence one nine panacea. Are these points clear? I'll give you a second one about Christ, but hold on. I don't want too much gap in between. Listen to this. Second, religious figures are among the most trusted community leaders. So seeing congregational leaders get vaccinated first can relieve anxieties and fears. Mm. You see? So if you don't do this, Pastor, you are causing your members to have a heart attack, maybe a stroke, dying from fear and stress, becoming depressed. Come on, Pastors. If you really loved your neighbor, your members, you have to give in. And then it was mentioned, if these churches love their neighbors, if these SDA churches and Christian churches were really U.S. patriots, they would open up their church buildings, their church premises, and whatever other sites they have, and make those church buildings, church premises, church sites. You know what I'm going to say next. Pestilence 1-9 inoculation sites. If you don't do this, you're not a Christian. You don't love your neighbor. You're not a patriot. Here it is, friends. Ask is that faith-based organizations are often highly skilled at reaching underserved people. Indeed, congregational leaders haven't simply turned over their buildings for use as vaccination sites. They're also manning the phones to get people mm vaccinated their friends are we in a crisis and now i'm going to share with you now a pastor there in the maryland baltimore dc area look at this on the screen friends pastor daniel as you can see this is his facebook post and i received this from members of a local sda church from the conference look at the t-shirt 
Tacoma Park SDA Church. Pastor Daniel, listen to this, friends. The pastor went on to say, he says, those who teach that the pestilence one nine panacea is diabolical, is detrimental to one's health, those people are guilty of lying. Those people are guilty of killing. Now, Christians don't lie. Christians don't kill. If you don't go along with this agenda, you are not a Christian. Watch this. Listen. Disinformation kills. Did you hear that? What is his context? Now, he's going to speak about QAnon and uh, the election. Let's put those points aside and focus on Pestilence 1-9. Listen. Disinformation kills. And these lies that COVID isn't serious, that the vaccine is dangerous, that the election was stolen, that QAnon is legitimate, these lies are having a horrible impact on life. Mm, 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 mm. The sixth commandment, don't kill. You're, you are guilty of killing. You're not a Christian, not a, patri a patriot. You're guilty of lying. Lying, friends. Lying. And this is where I want to introduce Christ. You remember what Satan said to Christ in the wilderness of temptation? Oh, he came with smoothing, with, with smooth words. Oh, if thou be the son of God, just, just command that these stones be made bread. If thou be the son of God, just cast yourself down, even though you know it's wrong. Commit a presumptuous sin. If thou be the son of God, fall down and worship me, and I'll give you the kingdoms and the glory of, of them. I'll give you access to these venues. If thou be a Christian, if thou be the son of God, it's the same temptation. And these ministers have been inspired by Satan. Government leaders inspired by Satan. Are these points clear? Now watch. Back to Dr. Richard Berry. Listen to what he said. I spoke to the president this morning and I gave him my recommendations. Would you like to hear my recommendations? Hmm. And of course, the many pastors. Listen. I recommend that when we can safely go back to church, person, person, we need to have five things done. Let's hear them one more time. The pastor of that church needs to have received his final COVID vaccine at least two weeks before. Mm -hmm. What about the members? Listen. Number two. Numero dos. At least 70% of the church membership need to have had their vaccination also. Hmm. I'm going here for a specific reason. Listen. Number three. Number tres. Every person in the church must wear masks or face shields. Cada persona en la congregación debe utilizar mascarillas o caretas faciales. A physical distancing. Mantener el distanciamiento físico. This needs to be enforced in a loving way. Hmm. And now he mentions that these recommendations were shared with President, not Wilson, correction, President Winston. Listen. I've made those recommendations to um, President Winston, and um, I think he has accepted it. Hmm. Hmm. Now, friends, watch this. This was posted on Facebook on Safe to Serve's page. I laid this out. When me, because many are saying, oh, it's just a recommendation. I want to say something. Do you know? Laudato C, paragraph 237. Do you know that's the Pope's recommendation to all nations? And how many of us, Professor SDA, spoke against that papal recommendation? 
But when all oh my friends profess SDA leaders make their diabolical recommendations, what do we say? It's simply recommendations. What do we call that? We call that hypocrisy. When men from Babylon recommend unbiblical policies to be enacted on the population, policies that are inimical to civil and religious liberty, some SDAs publicly voice their disapproval. Generally, those SDAs don't say that the policies are only recommendations. However, the same SDAs are silent when other SDA leaders recommend unbiblical policies to be implemented on church members. Many of them now say, well, the policies are only recommendations. Question, why are there two different reactions? Why? Why, friends? And on Instagram, I shared the Safe to Serve Instagram page. I shared a brief four to five minute clip. We call that hypocrisy, my friends. Clear as crystal for those who want to see. Now, why did I replay those clips from Dr. Richard Berry? Many were saying it's simply a recommendation. Watch this. Is that so? Listen to this. This is the Tacoma Park SDA Church. Pastor Daniel said that... Four pastors receive their pestilence 1-9 inoculation. For what purpose? Many reasons. One, so that they can reopen their churches. When it's time, listen to this. By the way, all four of your pastors at Tacoma Park Church have received the vaccine as we prepare to resume in-person worship in a few weeks. Hmm. Hmm. Now, where is Tacoma Park? That's Washington, D.C., that area. And what happened in my opening, my several news articles? Do you see a connection there? I'm wondering, were these pastors attending that meeting? Or did they send representatives? Or did they receive a memorandum, a circular letter? Did they receive something? Are these just recommendations? Oh, someone is going to say, the scoffers, the critics. It's only four pastors, pastor. It's only four pastors. <clears throat> How many people did Satan need to sin in the Garden of Eden? How many? All right, friends. Listen now. Now he persuades the members to also take the pestilence 1-9 inoculation. Listen. Oh, he said, we trust our medical professionals. Listen, in-person worship in a few weeks. We wanted to get ready. We trust our medical professionals, and we got the vaccine. And we hope that when it's your turn, that you're able to get the vaccine as well. Hmm. And friends, we can overlook the context. Reopening of churches, just as a virus spread, spreads also influence are also impacting and how prominent how influential is Tacoma Park SDA Church just do your research on that so friends I want to hear your what God has laid upon your heart there it is friends the numbers right there on the screen 689-777-5198 I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts, my friends? Now notice here. It says, It's not God's plan for us to unite with unbelievers in the medical work. Do not link up with the world. Do not form a kind of state church. Don't do it, friends. The union of the church with the state be the degree never so slight while it may appear to bring the world nearer to, to God's church, does in reality, but bring the church nearer to the world. Oh, friends. 
Caller, you're live. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Thanks for calling in. Yes, good day, Pastor. I'm calling from Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. You have one minute. Yes, I'm calling from Trinidad. I'm calling from Trinidad and Tobago. And Pastor, it is so mind boggling to even think that these pastors would tell us to get this vaccine when Sister White tell us that we ought not to join with the world. And these, this vaccine interferes with our health because I have a church sister. She told me that her sister in America received the vaccine and she was sick. She got terrible sick for two days. So we as church members need to come together Pray and ask the Lord to open our eyes that we don't receive this vaccine. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. Thank you. All right, friends. So here we are, looking at these issues. Caller, you're live. Thanks for calling in. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Yeah, Andrew, this is Stephen. Uh no, we shouldn't take that vaccine. It's an abomination to God. It's uh, It's got aborted fetuses in it. It's got pork gelatin in it. Will we not stand firm for Christ Jesus? Yes. Amen. Amen. Death before dishonor. That's our motto. I live in Texas, and I live out in the center about there's three Adventist churches in three different directions. And they're all getting ready to do the very same thing. And I tried to warn all of them. Well, they think I'm crazy. I've tried to turn them to present truth. We even have a, I'm not going to name his name, but we have a, a head elder in, in, uh, in one of these churches. And he, he knows about the apostasy. And he says, Stephen, why do they need to know about that? I said, what? Why, why do they need to know about what's going on in the, in the general conference? Because people are being led to hell, not to heaven. They're being led to uni not unify with Rome. No, don't take the, the, the inoculation. It's, it's an abomination to God. Amen. I'm so glad I got through to you. I've been trying and trying for several days. Thank you, brother. God bless. God bless. All right. Caller, you're live. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Thanks for calling in. Yes. Good afternoon, Pastor. Um, I'm calling from Chico. Um, we have the same issue here. Um, and it's as if they don't really care about the health message. It is as if it is um, on the back burner. And Pastor, I'm asking you to pray for my family, where the Israel family, and also my mother, because she doesn't believe in the spirit of prophecy anymore. And when I try to speak to her, she puts it aside. So I'm asking you to pray for us in this time. Thank you. We will. Israel family, thank you. Our caller, you're live. Thanks for calling in. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Hello, Pastor Henrique. Um, it's not my thoughts, it's just Bible. Things are going the way they're going, especially with those of us who are some of the Venice and apparently only a name. It's because our minds are stuck. Like, when we read the Bible, we read um, the about the mark of the beast. People interpret it the way they interpret it, and they have a picture in their mind. And because things are not the way they picture it in their mind, they are easy to follow prey to it. And that's why God talks about even the very elect being deceived if he did not shorten the time. So my prayer is that we do not read the Bible and interpret it ourselves, but allow God to interpret his own words. Well, who can better interpret what he says but himself? Amen. God bless you and continue on in God's name. Praise the Lord. Our caller, you're live. Thanks for calling in. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to know how much money or how many pieces of silver did it cost them to take everything that God has given the Seventh-day Adventist Church to 
throw it away. I, I just don't get that. How much money did it cost? And what does is it the papacy? Does the papacy have something over the SD churches and the other churches? What what is it that they would just like that throw away everything, sell the souls of the parishioners, and um, for money? I don't know if it's, is it money. Mm. I thank you so much, Pastor. Have a blessed day. All right. God bless. Caller, you're live. Thanks for calling in. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Thank you, Pastor Rinkus. This is Brother D calling. Yes, sir. Just wanted this to say, you know, the Bible tells us verses have fallen away. And now we're seeing um, a loss of liberty of conscience and a church promoting a loss of liberty of conscience, that we should be forced, that we should be... You know, if you're going to have 70 percent, even the recommendation means that you have to ask people's private information. You're going against every privacy idea that we might have had. We've gone against all these things in the name of health, a name of a health message that's not our own. And it, this goes to show this crisis is showing who truly believes in the health message, who truly trusts in God's promises of health. And uh, it really... It's really a mirror to look at ourselves and like, what do we trust in? Do we trust in God or do we trust in man? Hmm. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Caller, you're live. You have one minute to share your thoughts. And thanks for calling in. Thank you. What concerns me is, and I am a first elder. This information is not trickling down to the elder staff in some of the churches. And one of your members, and that concerns me, if I hadn't gotten this, I would not know what's happening. Now, someone put in the chat also, and this is my final comment, our people are not studying for themselves. They're not reading. And that is a just an accurate statement, but they're they're needing leadership, unfortunately, to feed it to them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for calling in. Uh, you have one minute to share your thoughts. Pastor Enriquez, I will not stand for this. I will follow Jesus wherever he goes, follow the lamb wheresoever he goes. I have families that are taking this prick, but I will stand for Jesus. I will stand no matter what. Thank you for all you do. Praise the Lord. God's love. Caller, you're live. You have one minute to share your thoughts. Hi, uh, Blessings, Pastor. Thank you for uh, preaching the truth. Um, it's very, it's very uncomfortable seeing the, the Church of God uh, do all these things. And and what you were talking about reminds me of of Elijah when he went to Acab, and Acab blamed Elijah for the crisis that the uh, was going on in the uh, in the land. And uh, I believe that it's happening again. And uh, it's just sad that, you know, all these truths are not being spoken out by a lot of people. Uh, I'm very happy to see that God has people speaking the truth. And uh, it's, just, it's just sad. And, and what we need to do is just consecrate our lives to, to God and, and worship him because the end result will be about worship, and it's, it's, it's Sunday rest by law. I know we may be considered extremists, but like you say, all these events are alarming, and uh, um, we, need to, we need to consecrate our lives to God and, and stand firm like the three Hebrews did, like Daniel did, like Elijah did, and uh, uh, know that we're not alone in this. The Holy Spirit is going to guide us, and, and, and God will give us the victory. Uh, just like like uh, Elijah told his servant, don't be afraid because there is more people, there is more that are on our side that are on the other opposite side. And and God will give us a victory. Continue on, my brother. Continue on, Pastor. Blessings to you and your family and to the whole ministry. 
Okay, God bless. All right, friends. Uh, those of you who didn't get a chance to share what God has laid upon your hearts, by God's grace, tomorrow is another day according to His will. Shall we pray? We, we do need prayer, my friends. We do need prayer. Father in heaven, we're thankful for your words today. Thankful for Jesus Christ. And may we understand that to whom much is given, much is required. Every SDA member name that was mentioned, shown, we pray for their conversion. You died for all of us. I pray that we will surrender all. Lord, we have sinned. We have been backward. We have been in apostasy. We are the ones in need. And today we see our need. Revive us. Reform us. We thank you for hearing us. Thank you for answering. In the name of Jesus Christ, may we be found faithful. Amen.